Hi, my name's Mark Stevenson, Managing Director of Bell Partners Finance. Welcome to our end of financial year wrap up for 2015. And there is no doubt the hot topic right now continues to be Sydney property prices and what lies ahead. In the last month, we've seen the federal government come out publicly saying there's no cause for concern when it comes to Sydney property prices. And on the other hand, the Reserve Bank Governor, Glenn Stevens, has called the current market crazy. One thing that's certain is that everyone is trying to avoid the B word for now. According to RP data, the total value of residential property in Australia was $5.9 trillion at the end of May. To put this in perspective, that's 3.7 times our national GDP. On that property, there is just under $1.4 trillion in outstanding mortgage debt, over 82% of the value of all stocks listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. With total assets held in Australian superannuation at around $2 trillion, housing sits at around three times this and is Australia's largest asset class. We saw 25 basis point cuts to the official cash rate by the RBA in both February and May this year, and many economists are not yet ruling out further cuts. Although Sydney house prices fell by just under 1% in May, the annual capital growth still remains very strong at 15% over the 12 months to June. This growth has been pushed largely by investors who make up for over 60% of the home loans in New South Wales. That's more than 10% than the national average. Median house prices in Sydney have now tipped at over $880,000. The growth in prices has left gross rental yields in Sydney at 3.4%, one of the lowest of all the capital cities. This slowdown in rental growth could indicate the current property market boom is on borrowed time. In an effort to curb housing price growth, the banking sector has tightened lending to investors on the back of renewed pressure from the regulator APRA. This has seen a reduction in availability of low deposit and low interest loans to investors. In the meantime, owner occupiers and existing borrowers have continued to enjoy interest rates that are at all time lows. In New South Wales, the state government has enjoyed a windfall of $7 billion in stamp duty revenue over the last 12 months, leading to recent talk of removing stamp duty at the state level and removing negative gearing at the federal level. However, at this stage, this is just talk and we don't expect to see any changes to these in the short to medium term. Looking at macroeconomic factors, inflation looks set to fall below the target range of 2 to 3%, indicating the economy is still struggling to find its feet despite recent rate cuts. The cuts, however, have had a positive impact on reducing the value of the Aussie dollar, which now sits at under 80 US cents, making our exports more competitive on global markets and reducing foreign investment into the country. Unemployment figures appear to have stabilised at 6%. However, this can be misleading as the most recent figures released in June show that over two thirds of the new jobs created were not full time, indicating there may be a higher underlying level of underemployment. In the first quarter of the new financial year, keep an eye out for any impacts to capital growth in the Sydney housing market resulting from changes to investor lending, as well as any further reductions to the official cash rate by the RBA. Although we are currently seeing home loan rates from as low as 4.04%, if you are looking to borrow funds for purchasing property, make sure you stress test your affordability for the loan at interest rates closer to the long term average, around 7.5%. That's an additional $1,441 per month on a $500,000 home loan. A good credit advisor will be able to do this for you. It remains a great time to fix your home loan as well, to lock in the current low rates and gain certainty for years to come. Thanks for watching our 2015 End of Financial Year Wrap Up. 